Good morning, everyone. Welcome on this icy, chilly morning today. We're glad that you're here. Happy New Year to you. It's the first Sunday of 2024. That is wild. Has anyone tried writing that out yet, 2024? I tried one time yesterday, and I messed up. I had to go back and correct it because I wrote the wrong year. But this time of year, we our hearts are filled with so much anticipation as we think about what's ahead, as we think about the year to come. The, the year is fresh enough, usually, that there's still a lot of hope, right? Uh, anybody have hope for changing in dietary habits or spending habits? Anybody join a gym this week? I did. So, <laughs> um, for many, this is the time of year where we consider there's just so much hope ahead of us, so much anticipation ahead of us. Um, so, or for many of us, maybe it's I want to be faithful to read through the word this year, be faithful to be in the scriptures throughout the year. There's just so much anticipation as we consider the special days, holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, special events. Uh, but I hope that we have the same kind of anticipation as we come into this place to worship today, as we spend time before the Lord. This morning, as usual, we're going to spend time singing, we're going to spend time in prayer, spend time taking communion together as the first Sunday of the year, and interacting together in God's Word. And that's a lot of togethers doing that. And uh, none of us have it all together, but we're in this with one another, uh, supporting one another, encouraging one another, lifting one another. Uh, we live life as ordinary people. We used to say this all the time. We live life as ordinary people together, but we serve an extraordinary God. And so uh, yesterday I was reading through Psalm 36, and in the middle of this passage, it really stuck out to me as I considered uh, this morning and, and, and the things we be singing and praying and Psalms uh, 35 verses 5 and 6 says this Lord your faithful love reaches to heaven your faithfulness to the clouds your righteousness is like the highest mountains your judgments like the deepest sea Lord you preserve people and animals the love of God is faithful it never fails uh, while that's such a rich truth, what's just as amazing is that it also is limitless, reaches to the heaven, right? going up to the star. We can't really measure that. It is, it is limitless from the ground to the sky. And in the same way, his ways, not just his love, but his ways are so good and faithful that they also cannot be fully measured. Going into 2024, does your heart need to remember that? That his love is faithful. His ways are faithful. Was 2023 a year where maybe you felt like a boat out on the water, kind of tossed, battered by the waves, tossed by the wind? Uh, God's love is unchanging. His love is faithful and it is limitless. His ways are always faithful. Don't forget that his righteousness, his moral character, his justice, his perfection is like the strongest of mountains we heard there. It's immovable. It's firm. His righteousness is reliable, even when our righteousness is far from reliable. It is worthy of building our life around. God's judgments, we just saw there, are like the deepest sea. His decisions, the way he goes about discerning things and acting, it has a depth to it that does not allow him to miss any detail, doesn't allow him to overlook anything. He sees it all. His judgments and his decisions are worthy of us relying upon. Uh, the, the men and the women of our church the last week have been reading through uh, a, a different Bible plan, the men and the women. But uh, for the men, and, uh, we, we've been reading through starting at the beginning in Genesis and then a little bit in the New Testament. And, uh, and if you've not joined in that but would like to, there's still time. Don't worry. There's still time to jump in with that. But yesterday we read of Abram right before his name is changed to Abraham. And, uh, and God made some pretty bold promises to Abram, uh, to this elderly man by this point. This older gentleman who, with his wife, struggled with infertility, was promised by God that despite their many years in age, they would indeed have a legacy of descendants that numbered like the stars in the sky. And in Genesis 15, 6, we read that uh, Abram believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. The Lord's ways are just as good today as they were in Abram's day. His faithful love is just as rich to us today as it was when David penned these words so long ago. 
His judgments are just as deep. So as we begin this morning, why don't we read aloud the next few verses of Psalm 36 together as our prayer as we start this time. Let this be the confession of your heart as we begin our time of worship. Let's read and pray together. Psalm 36, 7 to 9. How priceless your faithful love is, God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They are filled from the abundance of your house. You let them drink from your refreshing stream. For the wellspring of life is with you. By means of your life, we see light. Amen. Let's stand this morning as we begin. Let's stand this morning as we begin. Give thanks to the Lord, His love endures forever. Give praise to the Lord, beside Him there's no other. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, His love endures forever. Give praise to the Lord, beside him there's no other. This is the day, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from mourning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made, so what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord. Hear the word. Hear the word of the Lord. There's freedom for the captives. Amen. Good news to the poor and beauty for the ashes. So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from mourning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord. I live, I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live. To sing of my Savior's love, I live because He is risen. Let's sing that again. I live, I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live to sing of my Savior's love, I live because He is risen. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from mourning to dancing, from glory to glory, from mourning to dancing, from glory to glory, from mourning to dancing. From glory to glory, this is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord. 
What are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. We're going to have a time of giving. If DBC is your church, we invite you to worship through giving this morning. If you're visiting with us, feel free to let the bucket pass you by. count on one thing the same God who never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes I will Lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing, the same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can I choose. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against. Oh, yes, I will. Lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Maybe you want to take a moment and just simply pray to the Lord those words over 2024 for your life. Lord, I don't know what's going to come my way, but in the valley and the mountaintop both, I choose to praise, choose to submit to you and your ways. Yes, I will lift you high 
In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Ik 
Like, how do you want to teach this to me? I need my faith. And my faith is in believing who the Lord says he is. And I see my faith in him. You bless the ground that I put my foot on. And I say in Jesus' name,
Father, that's our prayer, that as, as the gospel is, is alive and well in our hearts, that, that we would be mindful of those who don't know you and, and that we would be intentional about sharing the, the love that we have experienced amongst those who have yet to experience it. So by your spirit, would you lead us? Would you direct us to those who do not know you and maybe come to know of the hope they can have in you? In Jesus' name. Ascended my Savior bleed and did my sovereign death. Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day was it for crimes was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day as I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against Against me, I am who you say I am. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me and know oh, his love for me. Yes, his love for me. Sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am free at last. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. 
While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me, who the Son sets free. Oh, it's free and deep. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am in my Father's house. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I'm chosen I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am oh I am who you say I am who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I my father's house there's a place for me i'm a child of god yes i am i'm a child of god yes i am yes lord we thank you for that truth today that we can trust what you say and what your word says. Not what the world says about us. Not what our flesh says about us. But the truth that we are chosen, not forsaken, that we are free indeed. Help us to live and lean into the truth, Lord. Not the lives that are all around us. So, Lord, in this time now, we just submit who we are to you. And that's the best thing we can do. There's so much freedom and submission to you. Help us to do that today, fully and completely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. This time, for the first time in 2024, all our primary age kids can go to Sunday Club. This morning, uh, before we, we move into a time in God's Word, uh, let me just make you aware of what's happening within the life of the church. And uh, a regular pattern of ministries is on, so things are kind of getting back to normal again. So our football's on tomorrow. Uh, our ESOL ministries are on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we're meeting together for prayer uh, Tuesday and Friday, so Tuesday evening and Friday morning. Uh, missional communities are not on this week. I know it says it up there, but we're not on this week. We're back on the following Thursday, which is 18th. Uh, just to remind us as well, there's no 4 p.m. service uh, in January. Uh, so if you have any questions about any of that, any of what's happening uh, this week, then do let us know. Do speak to us. Uh, this morning, I wanted us just to take some time to reflect uh, on a passage of Scripture, and then we're going to move uh, into a time of prayer. 
um, and we could be praying about all that's happening uh, this week as well. Uh, and I thought, based on, on our Bible reading plan for, for the guys anyway, uh, we're looking at Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we were looking at Matthew 5 a few days ago. Uh, and Matthew 5, uh, verses 13 to 16, uh, were really just words that, that really stood out for me. And, and often that happens when you read your Bible. You spend time in God's Word, and then just something just jumps out and hits you in the face. And Matthew 5, 13 to 16 was, was something that, that did that. And I've read this passage so many times, um, but in this particular instance, it was just a moment where uh, God was speaking, and uh, we can just take a moment to reflect on these words uh, and ask that God, by His Spirit, would, would really uh, prompt us to understand what it is He would want to say to us this morning. So Matthew 5, Jesus says in verse 13, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under, under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Now, Jesus here uh, speaks about any one of us who, who has faith in Christ, he describes us as being salt and light. Salt and light. And his point is that we are to be a people, individually, collectively. We are to be a people who are different. Uh, we bring life and goodness and grace to this world because Christ has given us life, goodness and grace from him. And as we move into a time of prayer this morning, I wanted us to begin by focusing on the fact that there are so many people we know who don't know Christ. And we can all provide a long list of people, family, friends, neighbours, work colleagues. We all know of individuals who are far from God and who are pursuing a life separate from God. And the temptation for us is that we become spiritually numb to their plight. Um, we, can, we can be numb to their spiritual condition we can be numb to their spiritual, des spiritual destination and we can just lose sight of, of what is going on in their life but also lose sight of who God has called us to be, to be salt and light. And so for you and I to be salt and light to them, we have to understand first of all <clears throat> who we are in Christ, what we just sang about a moment ago, um, what God has given to each one of us. He has given us the resource and the the courage and the boldness and the love to be a blessing to those who don't know him. Uh, but more than that, I think we need to have a heart and a longing to see people come to faith uh, in Jesus. It's one thing knowing what God has blessed us with and who God has called us to be. It's a separate thing having a desire and a love and a longing for those who are far from Christ and the hope that they might come to experience what we have. So as we begin this new year, I just simply want to pray and ask uh, that God would continue to change us, um, that we would feel what God feels. We would have a heart for what God has a heart for, in particular the lost. Uh, we would feel compelled, compelled in love and in worship uh, to reach those in our lives who are far from Christ in 2024. Uh, that this would be very much a, a spirit-filled thing, that God's doing something in us, but it's also a spirit-led thing. Uh, God would direct us to those who he is preparing beforehand to hear the gospel. Uh, and that's often what happens in mission. Uh, God will direct us to someone who he has already been working in. And as we have a word or a, a way in which we can bless and encourage, it was the right moment for us to do that. And God is using that moment uh, to speak to them and to bring them to a knowledge of him. That's my prayer. That's my prayer for, for Denison Baptist in 2024. We would see salvations this year. We would see baptisms uh, through our faithful witness. Um, and it would be a God thing. It wouldn't be a Denison Baptist church thing. It would be God doing the work. So let, let's take a moment to pray. As we look ahead to 2024, let's ask that God would do that work. Let's pray. So, Father, we, we thank you that, that your word is, is so clear. Uh, and there, there's no doubt in our minds about who it is you have called us to be. But Lord, we also recognise that 
that it is one thing us knowing what your word says. It's another thing then applying that uh, to our lives and to, to live in light of what your word says each and every day. But Lord, I pray that you would, you would bring conviction to our hearts. Lord, I, I pray that you would really just press in to our lives and, and really speak to us and, and really show within all that we are and all that we do and all that we prioritize, would you reveal to us the, the things which highlight that we are living for something else, something separate from who you have called us to be. And Lord, if there is any of that, we, we pray that as you convict us that we would choose repentance and we would choose to live a life that says no to the things of this world and says yes to your plan and purpose. Uh, and Lord, we, we do want to be deep down, we, we want to be a people who are salt and light within this community amongst our non-believing friends and family. Uh, and we pray for every person we know who doesn't know you. But Lord, there's perhaps maybe one or two who are on our mind, fresh on our mind this morning. We know they don't know you and we long to see them come to faith this year. And Lord, we just take a moment to remember them. Lord, we ask that by your spirit, you would be working in their life. And Lord, I pray that we would have the boldness to be Christ to them to bless them, to encourage them, but also to give reason for the hope that we have. So Lord, would you guide us this year as we seek to be Christ to these individuals and many others. Lord, we know that this has to start with our hearts. You have to change us from the inside out. So Lord, would you do that internal work that then results in us living externally according to what your word says. Lord, we bless you. We, we thank you for how it is you, you led us through 2023. And Lord, we pray that as we go into this new year that you would continue to work in and through us. We want to pray for this week and for all that's happening within the life of the church. Lord, we pray for the football ministry. We thank you for the many non-believers who come along to that. Uh, and we thank you that we have an opportunity to become all things to all men and to, to use that platform in a way which examples the gospel, but also has opportunity to share the gospel. And Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom in that, give us courage to do that. Uh, convict us of the moments where we have not done that. And I pray, Lord, that you would direct us in a way that results in salvation amongst the guys at the football. Lord, we pray for our resale ministries on Tuesday and Wednesday. We thank you for how you led that through 2023. We thank you for the team and, and we pray for them, Lord. We pray that you would equip them this new year. And Lord, we ask that the learners would not only learn English, but they would come to a fresh knowledge of you. That it would not just be a, a word, it would be power. It would be the power of your Holy Spirit transforming their lives and bringing them to a knowledge of you. And we pray for this week, Lord, we pray your hand would be upon it. We pray that you would bless all that happens in Esau. Lord, we want to pray for our kids uh, and we thank you for each and every child who, who is a part of our church. And they are such a gift. They are so precious to us. And Lord, we, we pray that you would bless them right now. We pray that they would have seeds planted in their hearts and minds that results in them coming to a knowledge of you in a much deeper way. We pray that today right now as, as we sit here. But we also pray that for 2024, we pray that the kids would come to a deeper knowledge of you through the faithful ministry of, of the Sunday Club team. And we thank you for the Sunday Club team. And we thank you for everyone who's involved in that. And, and we ask that you would give them fresh energy and strength as they serve in such a vital and essential way within the life of the church. So Lord, as we, as we take time now just to, to look at your word and to, to spend time um, focusing on what it means to, be, to experience freedom, uh, Lord, we, we pray that you would guide our time and we pray that this would be a work of your spirit through your word. It would be nothing of me. It would be all of you and that we would be anointed. You would anoint me as I speak but you would also anoint everyone here and that they would be open and receptive to what it is you have to say to them. So bless us and be with us as we journey through 2 Corinthians 10 and as we understand what it means for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> okay, so uh, this morning we, as I said, we begin a new sermon series uh, titled Freedom in Christ, which is going to cover the month of January. Uh, through this month, uh, as we start this new year together, uh, we're going to be thinking about what it means to be free 
uh, truly free because of the relationship we have uh, in Christ. The benefit and blessing of being connected to Christ is that we can experience freedom in a very real way. As we just sang, whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. Still awake, that's good. Uh, and it's one thing to understand this intellectually. Um, it's quite another thing coming to terms with this at a much deeper level, at a heart level, within uh, all that we are. Uh, and to be free in Christ means that we're free from the things that can so easily entangle us and hinder us in our relationship with God. And over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to think, reflect, and meditate on freedom from fear, uh, freedom from unforgiveness, uh, freedom from shame. Uh, this morning, we begin this series by focusing on what it looks like to be a man or woman of God who daily experiences freedom from lies. Uh, we recognize this morning that's a battle. That's something that we face every day, uh, whether or not we're going to choose to believe truth or lies. And so it's so essential we understand how to fight that fight, to fight it well, to fight it in God's strength, to fight it in a manner and measure that glorifies God um, and helps us in very practical ways. Uh, to understand what we're looking at this morning, we're going to look at uh, a key passage of Scripture as it relates to the subject of truth and lies and the freedom we have today. So Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, and verses 1 to 7. Let's take a moment to look at this. 2 Corinthians 10. And verses 1 to 7, Paul says this. Now I, Paul, myself, appeal to you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I, who am humble among you in person, but bold toward you when absent, I beg you that when I am present, I will not need to be bold with the confidence by which I plan to challenge certain people who think we are living according to the flesh. For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. And we are ready to punish any disobedience once your obedience is complete. Look at what is obvious. If anyone is confident that he belongs to Christ, let him remind himself of this. Just as he belongs to Christ, so do we. Amen. Dear Father, we, we pray that you bless this time. And um, we ask that you would help us now as we look at this passage, as we recognize the challenge it is to live in truth. We pray that, that you would take us by the hand in this moment and walk us through this passage and help us to see who you've called us to be. Amen. Uh, this week I was reading about the story of a guy called uh, Noah, uh, and he was someone who had been in prison for a lengthy period of time for a crime he committed. Uh, and after a time behind bars, he found himself out of prison, and he was back in the hustle and bustle of the modern world. And he described life after prison and back in the world as one of being institutionalized, institutionalized. That word institutionalized, it describes someone who, although is physically free, uh, is still behind bars mentally and emotionally, or both, day after day, week after week, month after month, they continue to live with this prison mentality. Their thoughts, speech, actions portray someone who is still locked up in their heart and mind. And he told the story of how someone asked him who his team was, and he immediately replied, not with the name of his football team, but with the name of his counsellor and his case manager. Uh, Noah shared of how as he struggles with day-to-day with -day activities and interactions with others. Uh, he would knock on a table when he, when he stood up from a meal. He would knock on a door, any door, when he walked in a room. He continued to have a locker in his house. He slept still in a bunk bed, even though nobody lived with him. He would find it really difficult to take a nap because he still thought he'd be letting his guard down and he'd be more vulnerable to attack. And he was a clean freak. He wasn't before prison, he was now. Uh, his experience in prison meant he was constantly cleaning his home. For Noah, he was physically free, but in his heart and mind, he was still bound up uh, in prison. Something similar uh, can happen in our lives. Uh, and particularly with regards to, to who we were 
and who we now are. Uh, whether you like this or not, the reality is that before Christ, you were in prison. You were in spiritual chains. You were in a spiritual cell. You were unable to break free from these chains and from this prison. Your life was controlled and governed by sin and selfishness. You thought, spoke, and acted in a manner that was completely against God. Everything of who you were was in direct opposition to the plan and purpose that God had for you. And there was nothing you could do, nothing you could do to change that reality. And something happened. Um, as, you, as Jesus says in John chapter 8, uh, those who sin are what they are a slave to sin. So this had complete mastery over every single one of us. And all of this changed. All of this changed when Christ entered into your life. He invaded your prison cell. Amen. He broke your chains. He set you free. And as Paul says in Galatians 5.1, for freedom, Christ has set you free. In other words, the work of Christ for you means that today you are by definition free because of Christ. You are free, completely free, not partially free, completely free. And because of this freedom, you're now free to love him. You're free to live for him. You're free to glorify him. The prison clothes are off. The garments of righteousness are now on. And that's good news. Is that not good news? In 2024. But in much the same way, we can also be spiritually institutionalized. Um, whilst this is the best news we could ever receive and we can be free, the reality is the memory of our old prison days still linger. The smell of our, of our old prison clothes can stick and to such an extent that we can find ourselves going back to our old life uh, in the flesh. And instead of living in the power and freedom of a new life in the spirit, we find ourselves returning back to our flesh and living a life of sin. And all of which is precisely why Paul continues his train of thought in Galatians 5.1. And he says after that initial statement, for freedom Christ set us free. And he continues on and he says, stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. In other words, watch out. Denison Baptist Church, watch out. Don't go back. Don't carry that old prison mentality in your heart and mind. If Christ has set you free, then you really are free. So live in the reality of that freedom because the Holy Spirit is in you and the Holy Spirit gives you all you need to live that kind of life. And the difference between whether or not you will do this is the difference between what it is you believe. It's the difference between what it is you believe. Are you going to believe truth or are you going to believe lies? This morning, I want you to think about the overall direction of your life. Just take a moment to reflect and ponder upon the overall direction of your life. Take a moment this morning to take stock of where your life is heading. What is it that you're prioritizing in your life? What is it that you're valuing? Uh, what is it that you're cherishing? Now, your life's overall direction stems from what you do consistently, your habits. And what you do consistently stems more often than not from what you say consistently. And what you say consistently stems from what you think consistently. So it all begins up here in your mind with what you think. And so it's absolutely vital that we are thinking and believing truth and not thinking and believing lies day after day, week after week, month after month. Because your thoughts determine your words, your words determine your actions, your actions determine your habits and your habits determine the overall direction of your life and what you value and cherish and prioritize. The Apostle Paul understood this. He got this. He knew this deep down. And we know that he knew this because of what we read in our passage. As he ministered and served the church in Corinth, the Apostle Paul found himself in a difficult pastoral situation. There was conflict between the Apostle and this rebellious group in the church. They rejected Paul's teaching. They rejected his authority. And the reason they rejected Paul's teaching and authority is because their thinking and behavior was rooted not in the truth of God's word. It was rooted in the lies of the world and the evil one. They were thinking and behaving according to the flesh and not according to the spirit. 
all of which had the potential to destroy the entire Corinthian fellowship. So as we think about the subject of freedom in Christ, and in particular this morning, freedom from lies, which is our focus, it's so important we pay attention to what Paul has to say within this passage, because how we think and what we believe, it changes everything. We have to understand this. How we think will change everything, for good or for bad. It's pivotal when it comes to our Christian life. Paul in our passage highlights three things we need to know when it comes to being free from lies. And I think we would all put our hands up and say, I want this. I want to be a person who is free from lies and who, who lives in the truth. So let's take a moment to think about what it is Paul focuses on in this passage in 2 Corinthians 10 and verses 1 to 7. Freedom from lies. Number one, it means that we know what to fight. We know what to fight. And have a look at what Paul says in verse 3 in the first part of verse 4. Paul says this, For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. Now, you might read that and remember something we looked at earlier last year, Ephesians 6.12. There's echoes of Ephesians 6.12 in this verse where Paul says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of his darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. So we can all recognize this morning there's a battle we face as believers, and it's a battle between truth and lies. And it's a battle not against the flesh, in other words, not against other people, our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's a battle not with the flesh. It's, it's a battle also not with the flesh. In other words, we don't fight this using our own human effort. So there's two things we need to understand. It's a battle not against the flesh, and it's a battle not with the flesh. In other words, we're not fighting against people, and we're not using our own strength to overcome and to experience victory in this battle. The battle for truth is a spiritual one. It's a spiritual one. So we need spiritual weaponry in order to achieve spiritual victory. I was reminded of this truth upon hearing the testimony of a, a missionary in Mozambique uh, this past week. And if any of you know anything about Mozambique, uh, you'll know it's, it's extremely poor. And it's also under regular attack from the Sunni terrorist group, Al-Shabaab. Uh, a number of years back, there was a significant onslaught from this group and a huge number of children were kidnapped. Many were killed. Over a million were displaced. Uh, and many believers, including pastors, who partnered with this missionary lost their family and friends because of kidnapping and murder. Uh, and this missionary even had a death threat over her and it meant she had to flee the country for three months. And then that time of displacement, in the midst of all of her suffering, she had lost so many that she had loved and cared for she found herself incredibly angry and bitter towards Al-Shabaab, this terrorist group. And it was only after a time of worship and prayer, she sensed God saying to her, would you like to ask for the miracle of forgiveness? And immediately in her heart, she found herself saying, no, Lord, I don't even want to ask for that. It's not that I just don't want that. I don't even want to ask for that miracle. She wanted to believe a lie, but her unforgiveness was justified. It was right, rather than the truth of forgiveness through the gospel. And as she was making these excuses to remain in a place of unforgiveness, she started to realize that none of these, excu none of these excuses washed, none of them added up in light of what Christ had done for her. And so she prayed, okay, Lord, change my heart, change me. She prayed that prayer, and then she had a picture of these terrorists. But instead of terrorists, she saw them as little boys, similar to the boys that she adopted. And she saw them helpless. She saw them in the dirt. She saw them dressed in rags. She started to see how they had been groomed from little boys into terrorists. And she saw that whilst they were responsible for all of these atrocities, God in Christ, through the gospel, was enough. He was enough to forgive them, and he was enough to transform them. She came back home to Mozambique after a few months, and she soon realized 
that God had also been working in the pastors that she was, she was partnering with. These pastors had lost their spousings, their churches, their own children, their friends, and yet God had also, God had also given them this miracle of forgiveness. These pastors, instead of bitterness, rage, and anger, they all chose to walk in mercy, love, and forgiveness towards Al Shabab, as did she. And get this, such was the power of what God had done amongst these missionaries and these pastors that some of the Al Shabab terrorists gave their life to the Lord. God was doing a work in them, and it resulted in some of these terrorists coming to faith in Christ. Now, in what ways, Denison Baptist Church, in what ways does this relate to living a life that is truly free from lies? Well, for a time, this missionary and these pastors believed a lie, and it was a lie that they were justified in their own hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness towards Al-Shabaab. And in a similar vein, there will be something in our own lives. It might not be as as extreme as that, but there will be something in our own lives, a lie that we have justified something that we have held on to, a lie of some kind or lies of some kind, and we give ourselves a pass. We think that to carry this in our hearts is okay. And as God had to do a work in this missionary and these pastors so that they were free from their lies and free to believe the truth of God's forgiveness through the gospel, (coughs) it is God and God alone who will do the work in us to be free from lies, freeing us from these falsehoods and leading us into the truth of his word. So freedom from lies means we know what to fight. We know what to fight. And that means we let God do the work in and through us so that we experience victory, spiritual victory. The battle is a spiritual one. The battle is not against flesh, nor is it with the flesh. It's a work of God's spirit to transform us from lies to truth. And this leads us on to the next point. Uh, Freedom from lies means we know how to fight. We know how to fight. And it seems like a really simple question, but it's such an important one. How do we know when a lie is a lie and a truth is a truth? And what do we do about it when we know what is what? So once once we know what is a lie and what is a truth, what do we do? as a result of our knowledge. It's one thing understanding what is a lie and what is truth. It's another thing then knowing what to do. To answer that this morning, let's read verse 3 and continue on from verse 3 into verses 4 to 5. Paul writes this, For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So we need to understand the absolute importance and power of comparison. Uh, A couple of years ago, uh, someone I know was on holiday and they ended up buying a Barcelona strip for someone they loved. And they they showed it straight away. And as I looked at it straight away, I knew within seconds, this is a fake strip. This is not a real Barcelona strip. Now, how was I able to do that? Well, the reason I knew it was fake is because I love football. I know a lot about football. And I know what the actual Barcelona strip looks like. So because I know what it should look like, I can immediately identify what it shouldn't look like. But this person did not love football. They did not know about football. And they did not know what a Barcelona strip should look like. So their lack of knowledge of the truth meant that they fell into the trap of believing something that was false. And for each one of us, so it is with our relationship with the truth. You will know a lie is a lie when you know what is true. Let me say that again. You will know a lie is a lie when you know what is true. (laughs) And Paul here in our passage, he calls us to compare to compare what we see and hear in our, in our world and in our lives with what God's word says. So we look at what's going on in our world, we look at what we are receiving, and we compare that with the truth of God's word. And with that biblical comparison, very simply, we will know what is true and we will know what is false. So Paul in this passage speaks in verse 4 about strongholds. 
And he speaks about how it is we are to demolish strongholds. That's one of these Christian words that can be used often, but at times we can struggle to fully comprehend what it means. What does it mean to demolish strongholds? What is a stronghold? A stronghold in Paul's day was a fortified tower within a walled city. It was a fortress, and people would flee to that tower within the city if the city was under attack from some kind of external source. Despite what was happening within the city, the stronghold, more often than not, would remain. It was consistent despite of the change surrounding it. And when Paul here speaks about strongholds in our lives, he's speaking about what he describes at the end of verse 4 and 5. So these strongholds, these are arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. In other words, these are statements and ideas that do not match up with what God's word says. And if by nature they are strongholds, it's not just that they're false, they're also difficult to shift. These are, these are falsehoods and lies that are deeply embedded in our hearts and our minds, and we're finding it really hard to break free from these lies. They're like a fortified tower that sits within us and remains in us. No matter what changes our circumstances might bring, often these lies can remain consistent. In times of blessing, in times of hardship, we still carry these strongholds, these lies, these falsehoods. And Paul says in our passage that not only can we identify with these strongholds, what these strongholds are, so we can know by comparison what these strongholds are, as we compare them to biblical truth and see their persistence in our lives, Paul says we have the power to demolish them. We have the power to demolish strongholds. It's good news. Is that good news for every single one of us today? They no longer have to have a hold over our lives because in Christ, we have the power in Christ to destroy them completely. And Paul goes as far as to say that, that we can take every thought captive to obey Christ. Instead of us being, being in prison, we can put our thoughts in prison to obey and submit and surrender to Christ. And that's an incredible image. Every thought that goes through our minds, we have to assess and test, and we have to make our thoughts submit to Christ. So we need to ask the question of our entire life. And every thought we have, we need to ask the question, is this biblical? Is what I'm thinking right now biblical? Does it honor Christ? Does this thought or these thoughts, do they glorify Christ? Do they magnify Christ? Do they bring encouragement or discouragement? Another way in which we can demolish uh, strongholds is to take every thought captive through the Philippians 4 verse 8 test. So Philippians 4, 8, we examine our thought life and we ask ourselves these questions based on this verse. It'll be up on the screen for us. So ask yourself these questions based on this verse. Is what I'm thinking, is it true? Am I thinking something that's true? Is it honourable? Does it honour Christ? Does it honour me? Does it honour other people? Is it just? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it commendable? Is what I'm thinking morally excellent? Is it praiseworthy? It's a test we can all do each and every day. It's so practical for us today, but it's so vital as we think about our spiritual walk. And I love, I love what Sam Storm says about this idea of lies and strongholds and how it is we can find freedom and victory in Christ. He says this. He says, a good working definition of a stronghold is a mindset or a mental framework that is shaped by feelings of hopelessness. And I wonder if that's you this morning. Maybe you're feeling hopeless by something that's going on in your life. He continues, this distortion in our thinking serves to convince us that change is impossible, even though we know that the way we are living and thinking conflicts with what God has said in Scripture. What he had in view are negative patterns of thought that cripple our ability to obey God and thus breed feelings of guilt and despair. They are often burned into our minds, either through repetition over time, such as occurs in an abusive relationship, or through a one-time traumatic experience, or even more commonly through the influence of false teaching and a skewed theology. The good news is that we have access to powerful and efficacious resources, adequate to prevail over all resistance and to defeat every enemy. Romans 12, 1-2, Ephesians 4, 20-24. 
we must dedicate ourselves to thinking and meditating on whatever is true and honourable and just and pure and lovely and commendable and excellent and worthy of praise, Philippians 4, 8. And entrust ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit who can overcome the influence of every negative and destructive thought. So I wonder this morning, what lie are you believing that has the potential to, to make you feel hopeless in your life? And maybe that's not something you're experiencing right now, but we can all recognize there have been moments in our lives where we have believed a lie and it's caused us to feel hopeless. So what lie have you believed? What lie are you believing that's causing you to feel hopeless? And what truth from God's word do you need to replace that lie with? What lie are you believing? What truth do you need to replace that lie with? And how do we actually do that? How do we do that? How do we replace the lies of our lives with the truth of God? Well, let me just highlight a few steps that we can, we can carry out as we think about freedom from lies. And the first thing you need to do is pray. You need to ask God to reveal to you the lies that you're believing that are contrary to his word. It takes a work of the spirit to reveal that. And as you do that, God will make clear through prayer and in his word what lies and even what strongholds are governing your life. And as you identify what lies and strongholds are having an influence over your life, search the scriptures. Take some time to, to study what God's word says and find what the counter truth is to that particular lie that you're believing. And as you identify the lie and as you identify the biblical truth, I would encourage you to literally write it out in a sentence. Get a journal, get a piece of paper and just write something like this. I reject the lie that and then whatever the lie is. Write it out in detail. Write whatever that lie is and then literally write out in a sentence something like this. I embrace the truth that. And write out in detail a verse or a passage that replaces that lie that is in, in contrast and conflict with the lie. And the last part is the most important. Preach that to yourself. Don't just write it out. Preach to yourself. Preach what you've rejected. Preach what you've now embraced and keep doing it again and again and again every single day consistently until your heart and mind start to change and what you'll find is that your heart and mind will start to change praise God there is power in his word and it will change us you will demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God it is possible I can say it's possible this morning because that's my testimony. Lies that I believed, using this pattern, this format, and seeing how the lies I believed were destroyed and diminished, demolished, because I replaced that lie with biblical truth. I took every thought captive to obey Christ. I've been able to do this in the past. I continue to do this in the present, and I encourage each one of us this morning to do that in 2024. You will change your heart and mind, which will change your words, which will change your actions, which will change the direction of your life. You will know that whom the sun sets free is free indeed, because you'll experience that freedom in a very clear and tangible way. That's the promise. That's what it looks like to be free from lies. This is how we experience freedom from lies. We use the word of God as a sword against the, the trickery and deceptions of the enemy. And it brings us on to the final point. The final thing we need to know as we think about having freedom from lies. And number three, freedom from lies means that we know who fights for us, who fights with us. We made a similar point last Sunday. And it's something I believe that God just wants to reinforce again and again. And if we hone in in verse seven of our passage, the final verse, we need to take heed of what it is that Paul says here. He writes, look at what is obvious. If anyone is confident that he belongs to Christ, let him remind himself of this. In other words, preach to yourself that you belong to Christ. Just as he belongs to Christ, so do we. So this morning, if you're in Christ, then the truth of the matter is that you belong to Christ. And we often fail to comprehend the significance of that statement. But just take a moment to take stock that you belong. You belong to Christ, meaning that God is with you. God is for you. And God is fighting your fight. 
he is fighting your battle. So that means that we have all that we need to experience freedom from lies. All that we need. As we close this morning, I'm conscious of the fact that, that maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're still doubting in your mind that God is with you, God is for you, and God fights for you every single day. And maybe you're in a place this morning where you're doubting the, the goodness and the grace of God in your life. And that's a very real challenge for us. I'm not going to stand here and say that I've never experienced that because that is a battle for me on a regular basis. And it's something that we can experience from time to time. We start to doubt the goodness and grace of God. And sometimes it can happen in the most unexpected of moments as well. Um, things are going well and then suddenly we just have doubt in our hearts and minds. And as we close, what I'm going to do is, is read some biblical statements of who you are in Christ. And um, we're just going to take our time. I'm just going to read these. They're going to be up on the screen. And as I do that, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to your own heart and mind. Pay attention to the screen, but pay attention to what's going on in your own heart and mind. And really just discern through the Holy Spirit what is going on inside as you hear these statements. How is your spirit responding? Are you receiving these wholeheartedly? Or do you find yourself pushing back a wee bit? Is there something within you that as you hear this biblical statement, which is true, do you find yourself pushing back in some way? And if there are any that you're pushing back on, I want you just to take a mental note or even take an actual note. You can do that as well. Write down which ones you are resisting within your spirit. So there's 42 of them. So brace yourself. Here goes. Let's, let me just pray first. So Father, we just pray that you would use this moment and um, that you would you would direct our hearts and minds to, to what is going on in, in our hearts and minds you would help us to see uh, what it is we have wholeheartedly embraced and what we have wholeheartedly or partially rejected so by your spirit would you guide us and lead us in Jesus name Amen so here we go you are a child of God, John 1, 12. You are a branch of a true vine and a channel of Christ's life, John 15, 1 and 5. You are a friend of Jesus, John 15, 15. You have been justified and redeemed, Romans 3, 24. Your old self was crucified with Christ and you are no longer a slave to sin, Romans 6, 6. You will not be condemned by God, Romans 8, 1. You have been set free from the law of sin and death, Romans 8, 2. As a child of God, you are a fellow heir with Christ, Romans 8, 17. You have been accepted by Christ, Romans 15, 7. You have been called to be a saint, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Ephesians 1, 1, Philippians 1, 1, Colossians 1, 2. In Christ Jesus, you have wisdom, righteousness, Sanctification and redemption, 1 Corinthians 1.30. Your body is a temple of a Holy Spirit who dwells within you, 1 Corinthians 3.16.6.19. You are joined to the Lord and you are one spirit with him, 1 Corinthians 6.17. God leads you in the triumph and knowledge of Christ, 2 Corinthians 2.14. The hardening of your mind has been removed in Christ, 2 Corinthians 3.14. You are a new creation in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You have become the righteousness of God in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. You have been made one with all who are in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3, 28. You are no longer a slave, but a child and an heir, Galatians 4, 7. You have been set free in Christ, Galatians 5, 1. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, Ephesians 1.3 You are chosen, holy, and blameless before God. Ephesians 1.4 You are redeemed and forgiven by the grace of Christ. Ephesians 1.7 You have been predestined by God to obtain an inheritance. Ephesians 1.10-11 
you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1.13. Because of God's mercy and love, you have been made alive with Christ. Ephesians 2.45. You are seated in the heavenly places with Christ. Ephesians 2.6. You are God's workmanship, created to produce good works. Ephesians 2.10. You have been brought near to God by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2.13. You are a member of Christ's body and a partaker of his promise. Ephesians 3, 6, 5, 30. You have boldness and confident access to God through faith in Christ. Ephesians 3, 12. Your new self is righteous and holy. Ephesians 4, 24. You were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Ephesians 5, 8. You are a citizen of heaven. Philippians 3, 20. The peace of God guards your heart and mind. Philippians 4.7. God supplies all your needs. Philippians 4.19. You have been made complete in Christ. Colossians 2.10. You have been raised up with Christ. Colossians 3.1. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3.3. Christ is your life and you will be revealed with him in glory. Colossians 3.4. You have been chosen of God and you are holy and beloved. Colossians 3.12. God loves you and has chosen you. 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. Amen. Now, if there are any, if there's any of these statements that you found yourself pushing back on, there is a strong possibility that you have believed an opposite idea, a lie. And there's a strong possibility that as you found yourself pushing back to that biblical truth, that this is in fact a stronghold in your life. And as your elders, as your shepherds, overseers, TJ and I would like to pray for you. If that's you, if you find yourself pushing back in some way to something I've just read, we would like to pray for you at some point, either today, this week, ne next week. What we would say is don't put it off. If you have and are believing a lie, then take the opportunity to be prayed for and take the opportunity this week to meditate on God's word and ask that God by his spirit would change your thinking which would change your life because there's nothing more important than experiencing freedom from lies as you experience freedom in Christ that's my simple call eh, for us this Sunday and as we go into 2024 so let's pray together and we're going to respond and worship Father, we, we thank you for just the ways in, in which uh, we are abundantly blessed and we have just seen so many ways in which we are blessed. And Lord, we recognize that every day is, is a battle and a fight and, and we pray that, that you, would, you would just continue to, to work in us so that we have strength for the fight, but we would also have confidence of the victory, that you would identify the ways uh, in which we need to, to fight for your glory and for our good. And it would be a work of your spirit as we meditate and rest in your word. Help us to be a people who are free from lies and who live in the truth because of all that you have done for us in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Stand together and sing. Cause I'm fighting a battle you've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. I don't
this peace that outlasts darkness, a hope that's in the blood, this future grace that's mine today, that Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow, for tomorrow's in your hand, and all I need you will provide, just like you always have. I'm fighting a battle, you've already No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. I don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. I'm fighting a battle. You There's mercy in the waiting, there's manna for today, and when it's gone, I know you're not, you are my hope and stay. And when the sea is raging, your spirit is my help. I'll fix my eyes on Jesus Christ and say that it is well. Oh, I know that it is well. I'm fighting a battle. You've already won. No matter what comes my don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done, and I'm fighting a battle you've already won. I know how the story We will be with you again, my Savior. You're my Savior, my defense. And no more fear in life or death. Just begin to remind your heart of these truths today. I know how. I know how the story ends. We will be with you again. You're my Savior. You're my Savior, my defense. No more fear. No more fear in life or death. Cause I know how the story ends. I'm fighting a battle. You've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will. I don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. I'm fighting a battle you've already won. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. 
And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. When all I see is the battle, you see the victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you Every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you If you're for me And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see, when all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Almighty, almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing could stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing could stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing could stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Oh, God. Battle belongs to you. Amen. Lord, I pray this week that you would help us as a people to live in light of the truth, to be willing to give up those lies that maybe we even want to hang on to. Help us to run to your word, for it is the truth. Lord, I pray that we would not do this alone or in isolation, that we would live this out in community, that we would rely on our brothers and sisters around us. Lord, help us this week as we go to our friends, our families, our neighbors, our colleagues. Help us to share your love effectively and abundantly. Help us to do that by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated.